Before last season, the Ringer put out a list of the best young cores in the NBA. Not only were the Memphis Grizzlies number one, according to the stats and experts, but they said, frankly, the top of this leaderboard wasn't even close. But a year later, they're one of the worst teams in basketball. John Morant went from the best young player outside of Luka Doncic to not even on the list as a potential face of the league. But the NBA should be very scared when he comes back. The top 10 spots are teams who make the playoffs or the play-in. Somebody is going to get knocked off this list and go into complete panic mode. Ja could be one of the best comeback stories of all time. A young star ruins his career, then takes it all back by reminding the world who he is, if he can pull it off. Forget the gun problems. There is something else Memphis is worried about with Ja. Dude was the next face of the NBA because of what happened in year three. The Grizzlies drafted John in 2019, number two behind Zion Williamson, who was supposed to be the real superstar. But Ja won Rookie of the Year and kept getting better. Year three is one of the biggest superstar leaps in league history. Goes from 19 to 27 points per game. Dunked on the best teams in the NBA to win most improved. Which doesn't normally apply to superstars, but this was unheard of. Steve Kerr even said the way Memphis was building reminded him of the Young Warriors. They drafted future star Desmond Bain at 30, starter Brandon Clark at 21. Like the dubs, build through the draft. So in 2022, the Grizz had an average age of just 24 years old, but outscored teams by at least five points per game. The only other team to do that this century, the 2011 OKC Thunder with KD Russ and James Harden. That is why Josh said he's fine in the West. But five months after that comment, everything fell apart. Ja flashed a gun on IG Live in a Denver strip club. That same night, Brandon Clark tore his Achilles against the Nuggets. The NBA suspended Ja because we could see this coming. Two police reports were filed months before saying Ja and his crew intimidated and beat up people. One week after a shouting match with Shannon Sharp, Ja and Chris Duarte got heated during a game. But Ja's crew aggressively confronted Pacers players near the team bus, and someone in a slow-moving SUV with Ja in it trained a red laser on them. Now, we don't know if that was Ja or if the laser was attached to a gun, but the NBA finally stepped in. Why was Ja trying to ruin a dream NBA career? Some people say he was emulating rappers that he loves to listen to. Ja is famously obsessed with NBA Youngboy who glorifies a gangster life. Or maybe since becoming the man in Memphis, he's got a new circle. Memphis is known to be a dangerous city and home to a lot of famous rappers. But Ja doesn't come from that life. He is from a middle-class neighborhood with two loving parents. Young boy's dad went to prison for 55 years and he was arrested for robbery in the ninth grade. But he makes that life sound fun and exciting. So it was no surprise two months later, Ja flashed another gun with NBA young boy in the background. This time he was suspended 25 games, but also missed a $40 million payday. In total, Jaw lost an estimated 60 million bucks due to his gun incidents alone. But the other problem Memphis is worried about could be just as bad. The Grizz went six and 19 during Jaw's suspension. He blamed himself for their record and said he learned a lot. The hope was to push for the play-in and erase the negativity on the court. In his first game back, the Grizz were down 19 at half to Zion and the Pels, but Ja exploded for 27 points. The game was tied with nine seconds left. Ja had the ball with the Pels' best defender guarding, but hit the game winner. You couldn't script a better comeback. Or maybe you can. The Grizz ripped off four wins in a row and Ja was back to dunking on the league's best defenders. Through nine games with Ja, they just went five and four, but it proved he was still magic on the basketball court. Then it was announced Ja had hurt his shoulder and would miss the rest of the season, just like that. It killed any chance for him to resurrect his legacy this year. And it didn't even happen during a game. Now I wanna come back to how Ja hurt himself because that is key to the future. But there is a silver lining. The Grizzlies have been so injured. They have used a record 29 different players this year. And two of them 
have become breakout young stars. Gigi Jackson was a second round pick, but just became the youngest player to hit seven threes in a game. In six starts, he's averaged almost a double-double with 25 points and almost 50, 40, 90 as a 19 year old. That is unreal. But Vince Williams Jr. was picked even lower than Gigi and will be key to their future. With Ja, Desmond Bain, and Triple J as their core, the Grizz were missing a high-level wing defender who could hit threes. Dylan Brooks was supposed to be that guy, but Vince is the new replacement. So next year will be terrible for one current postseason franchise. I mean, if you look at the West right now, the Grizzlies would push the Warriors out of the postseason. It's also bad for Houston, who are on the verge of breaking through. But you have to think of all these teams, the Warriors are in the most danger of missing the playoffs next year, which is crazy with Steph Curry, but someone's going to get knocked out if the Grizz return to the playoffs, which they will. Also, the Spurs want to be competitive. If they make it, that'll be two current teams that miss next year. These are all good teams. Now, the Dubs know this, and major changes need to happen. Same with the Lakers, but we know they want a big trade this offseason. They held off on getting DeJounte Murray to have three picks to deal and might get Trey Young. Let me know which team you think Memphis is going to knock out, but I think health is the main concern for everyone. If your star gets injured, you are screwed, including Memphis. See, Ja hurt his shoulder warming up for practice. He was just moving it around in a circle and it popped out requiring surgery. That's scary when you consider what happened to him in the past. Jaw has never played more than 67 games when he won Rookie of the Year. That means every other season, he wouldn't have been eligible for awards with the new 65 game rule. No MVP, no All-NBA. Now, to be fair, 2021 was a shortened season, but he was taken off in a wheelchair after tweaking his ankle against the Nets. Random injury, whatever. But the next year, missed 22 games, hurting his knee. John Collins barely touched him but it was a problem all year. So in the playoffs, Jordan Poole seemed to pull on his knee and John missed the final three games of the series. In 2023, he missed 12 games with various injuries, including this one where Cat set a hard screen and bumped his thigh. Then came down hard in the playoffs, had to miss game two against LA. The gun problems won't take John ja down. It's more likely his body. Dude plays with Derrick Rose intensity and the injuries keep piling up. Next year, the NBA should be scared about his return, but we'll see how long Jaw's comeback actually lasts. But one thing about Ja, he ain't soft. The NBA just tweaked his new rules, and it's really affecting guys like James Harden and Trey Young who hunt for fouls. Ja would have been fine, but why did the NBA lie to us when they obviously made these changes?